When a natural disaster strikes, like a tsunami, often we are moved by the pictures that we see, the reports that we hear. We think, I want to do something. I've got to help. And so we send money, aid, we rescue, we do what we can. And then, long after that initial response, long after the world is done watching, that devastation is still felt in that community. And the slow work of cleanup in the brokenness goes on. Sex trafficking and exploitation is a tsunami in a similar way. As we become aware of its reality and the tragedy that this exists today, often we're moved by what we hear and what we see. And we think, I want to help. There's got to be something I can do. Maybe you've sent money to an organization to do that. And then, long after that initial response, the work of cleanup in the brokenness of lives goes on. Sex slavery wrecks the soul of every person in its wake. Sometimes you can see the devastation in the eyes of the survivors, but seen or not, it's there. Most recent and most conservative estimates say that right now, there are five million people trapped in sex slavery. That's more than the entire population of Los Angeles. And of that five, more than a million are children. A million child sex slaves in our modern times? That's the same number, in fact, it's more than every boy and every girl and every middle school in California right now. Make no mistake, this is global, this is everywhere, this is over there, and this is in your community, and it's in mine, and it's often invisible. And this is big business. Those estimates say that this year, sex slavery is a $200 billion industry. That's more than the profits of Apple, Google, Amazon, Exxon, and Boeing combined. In regions like Southern Asia, it is still common practice to sell young girls into sex slavery. Usually they're sold by a family member, often for the value of one year's wages, maybe two, if she's especially beautiful and young enough. And still a virgin. The unspoken accepted age is 12. In the United States, your 12-year-old daughter's probably in middle school. She's nervous about her new class schedule and making friends. And maybe she's hoping you're buying her an iPhone for her birthday. Her counterpart now sold is brutalized, beaten, locked in a cage, maybe chained to a wall until she is broken. Her body and her will. There are parallels between what happens to this young girl and prisoners of war, tortured. It's called sex slavery for a reason. I mean, this is the nightmare we would never imagine or allow for our own daughters and our own sons. And I have met these girls. I've been in their brothels. I've seen the building where she is caged. And as you walk through there, you feel the filth. You feel the despair. You see empty eyes, sometimes black eyes of hate. Deepti and Vinika were two such girls, both about 13 years old. Deepti never looked. She just stared blank. Vinika, Vinika still has a trace of her will. And as we spoke and I asked about her, she whispered the word and she motioned out. Vinika still has hope that she can find a way out of this system. For now, she's trapped. And what happens to that enslaved girl when she gets pregnant 
Where does the baby go? Well, the baby goes under the bed where that baby will grow up and grow accustomed to the sight, the sound, the smell of her mother being used over and over every day, and the cycle goes on. This is the point in the conversation where we think to ourselves, wait a second, we've got to do something about this. We've got to save those girls. I have money. Can't we just buy them out? And the reality is, that for about 300 US dollars, you could. And then that madam who controls that brothel is rich. And in place of the one, she can buy two or three more. As a large scale solution, this simply fuels the system. There is no shortage of girls. And the cycle goes on. Unless, unless, you can reach the heart of the madam, the madam who controls that brothel where that girl is trapped, she holds the power. So who is she? She's a former sex slave herself. And when she has aged out of the useful years, probably in her early 20s, she's one of the few who have managed to obtain a position of power. She controls every aspect of that brothel and the girl's lives. She herself serves an overseer, but if you can reach her, you can reach the girls and the children, and you can change this story. As a communications coach, I was invited to Southern Asia to see the work and train the leaders of an organization called Project Rescue. For over 20 years, Project Rescue has been working in countries around the globe to change this story. For them, the work begins in the brothel and in those communities where brothels exist today. They're going to go in and do what they can to meet the needs of the people caught in the wake of this. They'll provide medical care to the girls, to the madams, themselves are often diseased. HIV, tuberculosis is running rampant. They'll provide job skill training so that, in fact, there could be a financial alternative out for them. And on and on, and over time, that madam begins to see that there is care not just for the girls and compassion, not just for the girls, but also for her. And her heart begins to change. And she becomes part of the solution. I met a madam like this, a former madam, She's converted her large brothel into being a legitimate business that makes clothing and linens. And as you can then get those children out of that hopeless environment and into an environment where there is hope and healing, they can thrive. They'll get the healing, the education that they need. And instilled in every girl in every child is a sense of dignity and a belief that says you can have a dream. These are the things that are stripped from a slave. Little Santosh here is about six years old, proud little grin. He said, I want to be a policeman. And this little guy on the end closest to me, he said, I want to be Thor. He's got the dream of every little boy in the world to be that superhero. And Priyanka, looking at me, this confident young girl, said, I want to be the Prime Minister of India. I have good ideas. And as these children age into adulthood, they will come into that fully equipped to transition well. They will get the healing that they need, medical, emotional, spiritual healing that they need. They'll get the education. Some go on to graduate school. Some have gone on to become nurses and social workers. They'll get job skill training. Others go on to become mechanics, seamstresses, but most importantly, when they transition back into society, they will go in no longer defined by what they were and where they're from, but defined by who they want to be and the hope they have in tomorrow. I mean, this is the new story for them, and this is worth fighting for. 
And over the course of time, tens of thousands of girls, their children, even the madams, the survivors have found this way out. To do this on a very global scale, it will take the work of all of us, from our governments, to our laws, our courts, to international cooperation, from corporate philanthropy. It'll take an army of NGOs that's working to bring healing to the exploited and working to change the culture at that ground level. And it'll take better awareness for you and for me. There is a place in this story for you. You can be part of the solution for this. It's like what happens in the aftermath of that disaster. The best of humanity and of our generous spirit rises up and says, what do you need? I can help. I'll do anything. It's really that response. And in that moment, we give. We give our time. We give our money. We give our expertise. It's not as hard as it can feel. There is good work going on in your community today, in your town, in your city, in your nation, around the globe. There is good work already going on. Find an organization who needs what you have to give. Because I know this, long after the world is done watching, long after you and I have been moved by the pictures that break our hearts, there is good work going on. They are working to bring healing to the exploited, to change this culture. And they need you. You can be part of the story that changes their story. Join me. Thank you.